Nigeria. Reverend Nwana, whose journey into faith and leadership began with a solid foundation in theology. He holds a diploma in theology, D8, and a Bachelor of Arts, BA, in theology, underscoring his dedication to deepening his understanding of spiritual matters. His academic journey continued with a postgraduate diploma in public administration, PGDPA, from the prestigious University of Calabar, followed by a master's degree in public administration, MBA, from the same institution. Demonstrating a multifaceted commitment to his calling, Reverend B also earned another master's degree in religion from Emo State University. He also graduated as a distinguished doctor of philosophy, PhD, from the renowned University of Port Harcourt. In addition to his academic achievements, Reverend B is actively involved in various ministries and programs within his church. He is the assistant district superintendent and sectional leader of Econnect Section in the Owari East District of the Assemblies of God, Nigeria. He is also the senior pastor of the Assemblies of God Church, Ikenegu. Reverend Noanibu is a dedicated spiritual father, mentor, and role model, providing guidance and counseling to his congregation and beyond. He is the convener of the Send Down Thy Glory International Music Crusade. <laughs> A platform that brings together talented gospel musicians to spread the message of salvation. The annual Send Down Thy Glory program has been blessed the most great gospel artists like Ron Canale, Don Mullen, Pam Percy Paul, Sinek, Joe Praise, Frank Edwards, as well as GUC, Mercy Chinwell, to mention just a few. He also hosts monthly ministration services such as the Crossover Night and Faith a weekly program focused on delivering miracles. Additionally, Dr. Nwanibu organizes a monthly spiritual antenatal program, providing spiritual support to expectant mothers. Reverend Bethel Nwanibu's impact extends beyond his local community. He has taken the gospel of Jesus to various continents around the world, including Africa, North and South America, Europe, and Asia. As a public speaker, conference speaker, motivational speaker, revivalist, Holiness preacher. He has inspired and touched the lives of many with countless evidences of miracles, healings, and breakthroughs. Living in a worry, Emo State, Nigeria, Bethel Nwanamu is supported by his wife, Pastor Mrs. Bozi Nwanamu, and their three children, Faithfulness, Blossom, and Valuable. Together, they form a strong and supportive family base, which further enhances Reverend B's ability to provide guidance and leadership to his congregation. With a standing ovation and a resounding shout of praise, yes. <laughs> let's welcome to the stage, Reverend Bethel. Thank you so much. Mike, 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 is it this one? I don't know why I'm here. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. I'm going to ask you to stand again. I'd like to very sincerely appreciate Pastor Joshua, as you do, and his beautiful wife. Please, let's celebrate them. Is that the way you celebrate a great man? Or do better than that? I want to appreciate you for your humility and for what God is doing with you. And thank you for asking us to come. God bless you. Yeah. I want to appreciate every one of you for being here today. We are trusting God that God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Let's rise to our feet. You know, lift up your hands and begin to give God praise and honor. Appreciate God for giving you the privilege to be in the sanctuary and not in the mortuary. Some people are in the mortuary now, but you are in the sanctuary. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him adoration. 
Is I faithfulness, O Lord, my Father? There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, defend not as I has been, Lord, forever would be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I need, that thy hands are provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, some moon and stars in their courses above. Joy with all joy and manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And a peace that endure it, thy own dear presence to share and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you may see his eyes. All that I need, that I have. to worship God. I'd like you to give me a little volume. Give me a little volume on this. I'm shouting. Give me a little volume on this. Or oh, I still use the other mic. Please lift up your hands and worship God right now. God is here. To Sina, the Pele, Kadati, to Sada, Yarake, to Sibalon, to Shada Marade, Siada, Ali Kato, Zebele, Situna, Mapareke, to Shagade, Siada, Elia Marado, Shanake, to Siada, Ragene, Pele, to Shalade, Paradaka, Siada, 
Otimalaka Pelido Sharaketu Zalaketa Parakedu Zalana Rikalo Zabarada Pelizaraya Mopo Shalanila Kalalito Sipilida Molo Shalala Zalana Sialabaro Skilana Bilak Sasiadaya Shadida 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 Balido Bo Simalana Ebereketu Shana Is there anybody here that has any health condition? I want to tell you that the healing power of God is present here now to heal. Come, Alida, Sharabareke, Tosiliahaya. Please lay your hand at that point of sickness. Because I'm going to say what now on that sickness we check out to her. Listen, we are not here for games. It's a serious matter. If you don't believe God will heal you, please don't lay your hands. But if you believe he will heal you, lay your hands because as I pray now, that sickness has no right to remain there. Amen. If you know you will testify, lay your hands at that point of your sickness. Speak to it now to leave. It will obey you. By the time you are done, I will speak a word to confirm what you have said. And you will see it happen. Go ahead and pray now. Go ahead and pray. Lebaro shala pele kalos kadiyadaya. Na hile di, I am the Lord, your healer. I sense my word. And I heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, the healing. I am the Lord, your healer. I sense my road and I hear your disease. I am the Lord, your healing. Oh, Balila, Shalamaraketo, Sidi Adaya, Oshiti Kalamanido, Zadaya. Kepalido, 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 Shadadari Kata Sidide, Raketa Paradedo, Shatana de Ziada, Pobede, Pobede, Skanana Ziada, Shikele, Pelido, Sapalada, Karaketo, Satalida, Pradida, Shoda Malaza Diza, Skalapere Keto, Sara, Shaladina Marakato, Skadizalaya. In the Marado Shadaya. That's a surgery case that God is dealing with now. You know what I'm talking about. It's a surgery case. But God said, I have removed it. Yeah. It's terminated from your system now. Just check yourself. You won't feel the symptom anymore now. I command any sickness in the head. Pack your load 
and go now. Every eye challenge. Be healed now. Any eye that cannot see or see well. Short sightedness, long sightedness. Any eye challenge. I command you. Pack your load and go and return no more. I bring healing to your ears. I bring healing to your neck. I bring healing to your head. Any kind of challenge with the head, be healed. I terminate movement in the head now. Hotness at the center of the head, be terminated. My gray head, be healed. I bring healing to your chest. Every kind of challenge with the chest, with the heart, be healed now. Every challenge with the breast, be healed. Every lump, I command you, disappear now. Every growth, anywhere in the body, I command you, pack your lump and disappear now. Tumor, be healed. Be healed in your stomach. Be healed of ulcer. Be healed of cancer. Any cancerous situation, be healed. Uterine cancer, be healed. Cancer of the breast, be healed. Every ovarian cyst, be healed. Be healed in your west. Be healed in your legs. Be healed in your hands. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your arteries. Be healed in your blood veins. Be healed in your bloodstream. Be healed. Every demon sponsor sickness, I command you, go back to send out. Every diabolical sickness, return to where you are coming from. Any sickness that cannot be explained medically, I terminate you now. From your head to the sole of your feet, let there be peace. I terminate high blood pressure. I terminate diabetes. In the name of Jesus Christ. I terminate palpitation. You were even having it now, but it had just gone. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Thank you, Father. God has seen somebody with an eye challenge. I don't know what it is, but God has just healed you now. I would like you to exercise yourself. Do what you cannot do before so that you will confirm that we are not joking. I didn't stumble into this place. I was sent by God. He sent me for some people. So check that thing that was happening to you before and you will realize it's no longer there. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that my own is to pray. God's own is to do it. And your own is to testify. Any miracle testified has been confirmed. It becomes permanent. If you keep it to yourself, you risk it returning. So, I'd like you to check yourself. This is the way it was for me. Okay? Every man of God has the way it was for him. You check yourself, you confirm that there is something God has done. You step forward to say, this is what God has done. And I lay hands on you and it's confirmed forever. So we're going to sing a song. You check yourself. If you discover that God has done something in your life, there's a miracle that has just happened. Pain has just gone. Something has just been fixed by God. Then you step forward and tell us what God has done. And it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Giving glory to the Lord. He reigns. Giving glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah,
All right, there are at least four people whom God has done something instantaneous in their lives. If you know you are among them, please. I don't need to persuade you. If God has done something, you should know that God has done something. Surgery case, I challenge heed, pen gone. So let us know if you are the one before I continue. God bless you. Step forward, step forward, step forward, step forward. Let's celebrate Jesus. Step forward. I'm expecting four people at least. Step forward. Yes. We're not joking, it's a serious matter. Right. The remaining two, please confirm it and join us here now. Confirm it and join us. How worthy of my praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. the microphone and know what God has done. Thank you, sir. Just straight to the point. This is what was happening before. This is what God has done now. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I believe in God. As you said, surgery. I do have appointment surgery in um, October. I'm just believing God that it is not going to happen. The, 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 sim, the, the symptoms. The, the symptom itself, um, it, it comes and goes. Right now, I don't have any symptoms. You don't have it. It has gone and gone forever. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not making a mere statement, okay? You didn't tell me you have a, you were both for surgery. God knew about that, okay? Give me your hands. Take the mic from her. Koli Barando Shataya. Lebo Shake to Zianayaha. God is bringing confirmation to that. There is power that is on you now. Ebube. Power! Just help her gently to the ground. Let's see our God hands. Praise God. I came tonight. I'm not seeing the night. My eyes were blessed. I'm not seeing anything. So this morning when I wake up, it's my eyes is burning me. And my knees, I have to account sharp pain in my knees. But when a uh, pastor said we should lay our hands onto where uh, we have effect, all of a sudden I felt that my the pains are from my leg. And my yeah. eyes was how the pain was I don't know how to say how the burning was it, but now it's okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Come. Your healing is permanent. Is permanent. Is permanent. Receive it. Mama, there is a mantle I see resting on you. God said, I've not only healed you, but I'm resting on you. The gift of healing. So that you'll be healing others. Receive it in Jesus' name. 
Let's celebrate Jesus for that miracle. Help her, help her to the floor. Leave her alone. Let the Holy Ghost be with her. Go ahead, man. Praise the Lord. Um, I've been having a lot of pain in my, especially my left feet. And it's radio to my back. I had a scan last week. Um, this morning, as we were coming to church, I was yelling at Gabby because we have about 10 bags to put in the car. And I couldn't, I couldn't even help myself to put the things in the car. So um, difficult to drive here. As we were ministering, I put my hands on my back because I've been having a lot of back pain as well. I was in therapy for about two years for back issues. Yeah. And today, um, as we were praying, I was walking and I did not feel the pain anymore. What a mighty God will serve. That way you celebrate the miracle. You, you, you know. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus for that miracle. Have you, have you had pains before? You know, when we talk about pain, it looks so simple. When you, when you have ear pain or toothache, you understand what we are talking about. For two years, two years affliction is gone and gone forever. Amen. My father, my father, Zoli, Talia, Kaparo, Shani, Meli, Aziada, let your healing be permanent. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mine is pain. My right, right hand. Elbow. 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 It's on and off, on and off, but this week it's been irritating. Wow. And this morning when I got up, I was feeling the pain. So when you said, uh, she put her hands on where the problem is. I did. And now I can't feel anything. Can't feel anything. Can't feel anything. Celebrate Jesus. Come. Your healing is permanent. It has gone and gone forever. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate Jesus for the miracles he has done. This morning, we will be looking at Psalm 55, verse 10. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be reading all that scriptures. And I want to... I hope you have your writing materials. Because I like to teach. And I want to see you writing something. Because what you have learned is what you will remember after you have forgotten all. A short pencil... Is better than a short, a long memory. And those who just something when people preach grow faster than those who don't judge. It's true. You have your reference point. And when I see you writing, it increases my anointing. <laughs> Today we'll be looking at enemies inside. Can anybody say enemies inside? Enemies inside. Be dealing with enemies inside. As soon as I say enemies inside, I know the mind of everybody will go to enemies fall down and die. <laughs> but today I want to show you the most dangerous enemy. The most dangerous enemy or enemies are enemies inside not outside. Amen. Psalm 55 verse 10 Day and night they prowl about on his walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Short scripture but very powerful. Just leave it. Go back to that verse 10. Now, this is a picture of Israel having their soldiers watching the city. Day and night, they prowl about on the wall. You remember the walls of Jericho? We were told that the wall is so thick that if you put like five chariots, they can run on it. That's the kind of wall they build that soldiers can walk around, prowl around on it. So the psalmist was saying, they were prowling around the wall, watching for enemies outside. 
but they never knew that there were enemies within. That's what that scripture is saying. Real enemies are not the enemies that can kill the flesh, but the enemies that can kill the soul. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus said, Be not afraid of they that can kill the flesh, but have no power over your soul. But rather be afraid of him that can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. I'm sure you know internal sickness is more dangerous than the ones outside. Mm -hmm. If you have bruises, you may not worry so much about it. If you have rashes on the body, you may not worry so much about it. But when the doctor tells you you have eternal bleeding, it's an emergency. You become apprehensive. So sicknesses inside are worse than the ones outside. Enemies within. I read a book one day and I met what they call the fifth column. I didn't understand that until I read the book, until I finished reading it. They said the fifth column, they told a story of a city that was fighting against another city. And then the captain took the soldiers to war. And they were climbing the mountain, crawling up the mountain. And then they got to the peak and they could see the city. Well fenced, high fence with a high gate. So one of them asked the captain, this city is well fortified. How are we going to penetrate? The captain told them, fifth column. They didn't understand what he meant by fifth column. Say, sir, we don't understand. He said, don't worry, watch. So they stayed there and they were watching. It was getting dark. Then some soldiers inside sneaked out, came and opened the gate, and they went back. He told them that is the fifth column, having enemies inside. So I have my spies. I have, I have uh, saboteurs inside of them. And so when he, they opened it, they disappeared. So they invaded the place and overcame the place. It is called the fifth column. Enemies inside. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. You will find those enemies that are inside. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. One, sexual immorality. I wish I can take it with King James Version so we can get those names. Uh, the, the, this one put two things together and called it sexual immorality. Thank you. Number one there is adultery. You see, King James separated adultery and fornication. But an IV put the two together since they are still immoral, sexual immorality. But we need to look at them one after the other. Adultery. Adultery is that between married people, right? Mm -hmm. The fornication uh, could be still married people and unmarried people. So he put them together. So you see, number one enemy inside there, adultery. Number two enemy, fornication. Number three enemy, uncleanness. Uncleanness is impurity. Anything impure. Number four, there is lasciviousness. Lasciviousness 
is lustful impurity. And this is the place you can bring in pornography, masturbation, sexual perversion. You go to the next verse, you see idolatry. Today, the work of some people is an idol to them because they can leave the work of God for their own work. And they say something about that. Some movies have become a God to them. Some phone has become God to them. Social media. They are ready to be on social media for three hours, but they cannot pray for 15 minutes. They can't study the word of God for 10 minutes, but they can be on social media for one hour. It has become a God to them. So when we talk about idolatry, you may not have something and start bowing to it. But there are anything that you love more than God has become a God to you. Anything that can take the place of God in your life has become God or an idol to you. You see, the next one is witchcraft. Witchcraft craft here involves sorcery. Sorcery. I'm sure you know a lot of native doctors are on the pulpit today. Yes. A lot of native doctors are now on the pulpit today. They are wearing collar today. <laughs> Prophesying and then doing all manner of sorcery with people. The next one there is hatred. Hatred. Hatred can also be translated hostility, being hostile. No, the next one there is variance. Variance can be translated quarreling, quarrelsomeness. You know, there are people who have the gift of quarreling. <laughs> They go to Dallas, they quarrel. You judge the matter, they are not at fault. They go to San Antonio, they quarrel. Judge the matter, they are not at fault. They go to Houston, they quarrel. Judge the matter, they are not at fault. Such a person definitely has a problem. So, quarrelsomeness. The, the next one there is emulation. Emulation there can be translated jealousy. You know, there are a lot of jealousies in the house of God today. We cannot appreciate somebody who is doing something well because of jealousy. We can't give compliment to somebody who is doing something well. You know, Especially Africans are known for celebrating somebody when the person has died. <laughs> and when the person is alive, alive, oh no, they will hate the person. They will fight the person. But when the person dies, they will not bring flower and put on the grave. They will come and give a you know, funeral oration, elogize the person that they never did when the person is alive. Jealousy. This brother knows how to play the keyboard very well. He said, what? Why don't you travel to Maryland? You will find people who know how to play keyboard. So we need to travel to Maryland to find people who know how to play keyboard. <laughs> Instead of acknowledging that he knows how to play keyboard. That's jealousy. Jealousy. The next one there is what? Wrath. Wrath here has to do with outbursts of anger. There are people like that. Others are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are filled with that boss of anger. <laughs> no, when they get angry here, they will smash the TV, break somebody's head, and at the end of the day, they start apologizing. That is enemy inside. Next one there is strife. Strife can also be translated selfish ambition. 
Selfish ambition. That thing you want to do, what is the reason? Who will be glorified? The next one there is sedition. Sedition can also be translated dissensions. And then the last one there is heresies. Heresy can also be translated divisions. People who divide the church. They know how to cause division in the church. These we neglect, but they are the real enemies. From the African background, we see a lot of enemies. And I want to tell you that they truly exist. Huh? They truly exist. Enemies in the house, they truly exist. I discovered in a house in the village that anytime I come back, somebody has spread blood across the door. Huh? I know you people don't have such things in your place. <laughs> but somebody has spread blood across the door in such a way that you must cross it to enter the house. And I was asking God, who is doing this thing? What was going on? Then one night as I was sleeping, around 1 a.m., there was a tap on my body. Um, um, I opened my eyes. And then I heard a voice open the door. I want to show you something. I knew it was God. So I opened the door and came out to the passage, the corridor. There, there was no light there, but we had light in front of the house. So if somebody is coming, you will see the person, but the person will not see you because you are in the dark. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. So as I was standing there, I noticed a movement. Now, some of us from Africa will understand what I'm talking about. The place I'm talking about is a place where our ancestors live. So my dad was the first person who went to build a house there. So we were surrounded by bush. So at that time of the night, when it's getting that, people are afraid to approach that place. But somebody was coming from that place by 1 a.m. So as I watched carefully, the person came to the light I discovered it was the elderly woman who lives next to our house. She was coming from that place stark naked. Stark naked. I said, hey, what, why is she naked? And what did she go to do at that place by this time of the night? Now, instead of crossing our compound and entering her own compound, she veered into her own compound. And what is she coming to do here? As I watched carefully, she came to the entrance of the door and started digging the ground. What is she doing? Then she started her enchantment. Started calling my name and the names of my siblings. Said, they will not prosper. They will die. It shall not be well with them. I said, ah, ah. It is in Nigerian and Ghanaian home movies that I see this kind of thing. <laughs> So this is real. I nearly lost my cool and wanted to jump down and confront the woman. Then God said to me, what were you doing when I woke you up? I said, I was sleeping. He said, if I didn't wake you up, would you have seen this? I said, no. So I said, what are you doing gra -gra now? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. So I stood there and watched the whole movie until it was over. The woman left, entered her house, so I stepped down and scattered everything she did. The next day, I left for work. As I was coming back in the evening, I saw a crowd in her compound. What's going on? They said the woman has died. You know, there are people who are untouchables. And today, I declare you an untouchable person. No weapon and fashion against you shall prosper. And any tongue that shall rise against you shall condemn in judgment. If you stand up and say a better amen, so shall it be unto you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now I'm sharing this story to invalidate the fact that there are physical enemies. Okay, a friend of mine, ministered in my church, he told us a story of how 
a friend he met in Lagos. In fact, he came into the city of Owere where I am and then called them on phone. The man was not picking. The wife picked and said, your friend is sick. He can't talk. He can't stand. He can't walk. He can't do anything. He can't hear you. What's going on? He now told him the story of what happened. He traveled to the village because God has blessed him. So he said, let me go and build a house. So he got to the village and he brought people who started digging foundation for him. While he was digging foundation, his uncle came. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to build a house. You want to build a house when I don't have a house? He said to him, stop that and leave this place. He said, uncle, the house I'm building is for all of us. And the workers are already here. You don't want to leave? So the uncle walked away. They finished that day, came back the next day to continue the work. As soon as he stepped into that place, he started feeling dizzy. So the worker said, probably because you have not taken breakfast, why don't you go and take breakfast? So he left and entered the house. And that was the last time he came out until two years. My friend was calling him the second year. He just entered the house, could no longer identify anybody could no longer walk, could no longer talk, started, you know, swelling. So my friend heard about it and he decided to visit them. And when he got there, he prayed. And after the prayer, God healed him. Amen. And today he has finished that house. Amen. I'm telling this story to invalidate, to validate the fact that there are enemies, okay? But... These enemies I'm talking about inside are more dangerous than these physical enemies. I will give you four things about them. I'll be ready to pray. Number one, enemies inside short circuit you. That is to say, they make God to turn his back on you. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Why? Verse 2. But your iniquities. Somebody say iniquities. For your iniquities are separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sir, the worst thing that can happen to you is to call God when he matters most and he keeps quiet. The worst thing that can happen to you is to call God when he matters most and he keeps quiet. And he turns his back onto you. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, from verse 15 to 19, you see Saul in the picture. He sinned against God and God could no longer answer him to the point that he went to inquire for a witch. And then somebody like Samuel who showed up gave him a prophecy and said, because you left God, because you sinned against him, he has turned his back onto you and since you want to hear from God, he said, today you and your two sons will join me in the land of the dead. So when you look up to heaven and heaven becomes brass, that is what enemy inside can do. So number one, enemies inside shall circuit you, make it impossible for you to assess God. That is why they are dangerous. Number two, victory over enemies outside begins with victory over enemies inside. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Victory over enemies inside. 
or victory over enemies outside begins with victory over enemies inside. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 and Psalm 25 verse 21. Proverbs 16 7. When a man's way please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. If your ways please the Lord, he makes even your physical enemies. He handles them. He deals with them. He make, makes them to be at peace with you. Psalm 25 verse 21. I want to appreciate those of you who are on the console. You are doing a great job. God bless you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Integrity preserves. Please let me tell your neighbor, neighbor. Integrity preserves. You are looking for preservation. Integrity preserves. I don't know how to, or I should have gotten a white paper to illustrate this. But integrity, a child of God is like somebody wearing a white garment. And what does a white garment represent? Huh? Purity. Yeah, it represents purity. Now, if the devil wants to shoot an arrow on you, and you are this white, he will not succeed. You understand what I'm talking about? He will shoot, there will be no penetration. But if you have spots, this one is fornication we talked about. This one is adultery. This one is variance, hatred, and all that. If the devil wants to shoot you, the devil does not shoot at random. He will target any of these spots. And as soon as he gets it, he penetrates. This is why a lot of children of God say, I had an attack. I had an attack. And he penetrated. He succeeded. The devil will always target a spot in your life. And if he does, he will succeed. So that is why you need to deal with the enemies inside if you must overcome the enemies outside. Your life is in danger if you are not living well for God. Okay, no matter how you roboscata, <laughs> no matter how you vibrate and pray and all that, you have sin, living in sin. Sorry, the enemy will always deal with you. Number three. Enemies inside can bring physical destruction to you. I will explain that. Enemies inside can, not win, will, can also bring physical destruction onto you. Can kill you faster than enemies outside. Enemies inside can make God to destroy you. How many of you know what is called Balamism? Balamism, wave your hand. Have you had anything called Balamism? All right. Okay, I'll tell you. Balamism is the theory of Balaam. You know Balaam in the Bible. Balaam brought Balak to a kind of uh, curse the people of Israel. You remember the story? They tried and tried. It never worked. Okay, Balak the king brought Balaam to curse. It didn't work. They tried from several places. It never worked. Then he told him, these people are children of God. There is nothing you will do and succeed. But take my counsel. On the market day, cause your women to go naked. They will see them. They will be seduced. They will go in unto them and commit fornication, commit adultery, commit wardom. When you have succeeded in doing that, you don't need to make effort to kill them anymore. Their God will kill them himself. 
That is what is called Balamism. They tried it and it worked. That is why people, ladies who go naked on the road, don't know that they are running a schedule for somebody. That they are working for somebody. They are fulfilling Balamism. That the devil is using them to achieve an agenda. So, when you sin against God, in fact, God himself will even deal with you. You don't need the enemy to do that anymore. The other side of the coin, enemies inside can physically kill you. I'll give you one or two examples. People die of lung cancer because of smoking, right? Lung cancer because of smoking. People die of fornication. Probably they caught one sickness or the other and they die. I used to have one member. Very smart member. You know. He doesn't attend Sunday school. How many of you here know what is called a Naga or Okada? Okay, even in Ghana they call it Okada, I think so. You know, people who ride motorcycles, cyclists, and it's a business, it's like uh, Taizi, it's easy to carry people. And uh, so that's the way they become self employed. So this guy rides the bike. During Sunday school, he will use his bike, you know, he will go move around to get some money. And when the Sunday school is over, he will now come into church. And then from there, he will use, you know, some Sundays to do that. You know, the devil is very tricky, step by step. And then before you know it, some Sundays, in a month, two Sundays will go for that. Three Sundays we go, and from there he was not coming anymore. Then the next thing was he left his wife and went and started living with another woman. So after a while, the woman dealt with him. <laughs> he became sick and was hospitalized. The woman carried all his properties and left. And then when he got to the hospital, the Okay, when the woman left, he now remembered his wife. <laughs> and then came back. So the wife came to me as, a, as the pastor and said, Thank God my husband is back. And I said, don't, I said to her, don't rejoice yet. <laughs> and as an experienced pastor, I said to her, Never you sleep with him until he goes for a test. And as if I knew, the man went for a test. He was HIV positive. He went to the hospital, in fact, less than one month, he died. So enemies inside are very dangerous. You know, there are people who think they are very smart with God. <laughs> you can't outsmart God. Are there are no Christians who have alcohol in their fridge? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Or you think I came all the way from Africa to come and see Lula before you? We need to tell ourselves the truth. And after drinking, you you put a ton -ton in your mouth. You know, you put uh, you know candy in your mouth to rinse your mouth, and nobody will know. It can kill you one day. Have we not had our people had kidney problems, liver problems because of alcohol? Sin habit can destroy your life. Don't think you are enjoying life. It can destroy your life. Taking drugs 
Uh, one day you will call her. <laughs> yeah. My wife and I were in uh, Italy, right? And a woman invited, pleaded with me to come to the hospital to pray for the son who was taking drugs, hard drugs. And uh, before he knew it, he went mental. And we went to pray for him. Thank God for his mercies who had our prayers and restored him. But everybody may not have that second chance. So sin habit can destroy your life. I want to plead with you, brothers and sisters. Live for God. Live for God. Live for God. Do you know that it is the same Bible? The same Bible that God will use to judge Africa that he will use to judge America. The same Bible he will use to judge Europe. Sir, God will not say, well, I understand you are in America. I know how things work in America. And then he will give you consideration. No, God will not do that. The standard of God remains the same. Fornication in Africa is the same fornication in America. Huh? Adultery still remains the same, no matter how it is baptized. You know, fornication, no matter how you baptize, you know, these days we baptize it having fun, you know, call it having fun, dating somebody. Instead of saying I'm fornicating, they say I'm dating somebody. No matter the baptism you give the name, it is the same thing. God will judge. I want to let you know that it is possible to live for God in America. It's possible. It's possible to be committed to God in America. Finally, enemies outside can only kill the flesh, but they are not as dangerous as enemies inside. It can kill the soul. The soul, I've said it can kill the body, can destroy your life, but this time around it can also take you to hell fire. Brothers and sisters, hell is real. Hell is real. I know it's not a popular message. Yeah, somebody has once told me, ah, you don't need to preach this kind of message in America. <laughs> I traveled to Spain some years ago to minister to the church. It was like a revival meeting. So when I got there, we were two guest speakers. It was going to be a four-day program. I was going to start it on Thursday and Friday. And the other guy was the guest speaker coming from South Africa We take up Saturday and Sunday. When I got there on Thursday, already I had prepared a message that will excite the people. You know the kind of message you'll be preaching, everybody will be standing up and shouting, right on! <laughs> Especially when you, are, you, you go to a place for the first time, you want to impress the people. Are you with me? You want to impress the people. So I prepared that kind of message. And as I landed, God said to me, you are not going to preach that message, you will preach on sin. S-I-N, sin. I said, ah, this is not a popular message here. Then God asked me, who sent you here? I said, you sent me. So if I sent you, are you going to carry out your own message or the one who sent you? I said, the one who sent me. I said, I surrender. So that day I came up and I hammered it. I, I mean, I hammered it raw. And by the time my fellow guest speaker actually, when he arrived, instead of going to the hotel, he came straight to the church. He said, let me see the, how the first guest speaker will fare. So I know how to take up from there. And by the time I finish, in fact, before I finish, he was the first person who ran to the altar. I mean, the guest speaker was the first person who ran to the altar, fell at the altar, and started rolling and said, God, have mercy on me. The host pastor also ran the entire church. When I finished, the pastor walked up to me and he said, Thank you 
for calling us back to God. He said, when I came here, 10 years ago, I was preaching this kind of message. But he said, the more I preach it, the emptier my church became. So I decided to change my message to what they would like to hear. And he said, God has used you to call us back today. Sometimes we need to hear messages like this that we make us to become what God wants us to be. We are not just here for these mundane things of life. There is a place we are going to. Please let me tell somebody that's a place we are going to. I ministered in a conference and when I finished I was about to go. A lot of people wanted to see me. So they crowded around me. It was like a homecoming. It's a place they used to know me. And I was patient seeing them one by one. So there was this woman who stood for a long time. And it was like her turn was not coming to see me. So she now went to my wife and told my wife this story. She said she offended the husband. I'm talking about enemies inside. The husband said, I will not forgive this one. She said, I knelt down and pleaded with him. He said, no. I cooked a good soup to say I'm sorry. <laughs> he refused. And everything happened so fast. The man became sick. Was rushed to the hospital. This man, this woman ran to the hospital as she entered the hospital room where the man was. The man had already gone into coma. As she walked in, the man lifted up his hand and said, Darling, there are two people on black who have come to take me. Please don't allow them. He said it the second time. There are two people on black who have come to take me. Don't allow them. And then the third time, there are two people on black. His mouth got suspended and his hands gradually dropped and he died. This woman was weeping before my wife, saying, my husband has gone to hell. After all the years of labor, years of suffering, years of mockery, years of working for God, this is how he ended enemies in the house it might just be hatred it might just be unforgiving spirits it can destroy you even in hell it can even destroy you here I'm sure you know that unforgiveness can cause ulcer can cause high blood pressure can cause migraine headache and ask medical doctors Nelson Mandela of the blessed memory said forgive somebody you will realize you have released somebody from prison and that prisoner is you. Forgive somebody, you will realize you have released a prisoner and that prisoner is you. Enemies inside. Before we pray, what do we do to deal with these enemies inside? Number one, surrender your life of sin to Jesus. Don't hide it. Don't cover it. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. You see, the power of sin is in its secrecy. Please write it down. Don't forget this. The power of sin is what? In its secrecy. Most times the devil will tell you, ah, don't, don't confess it. Don't, don't make it open. D don't reveal it. You know, you keep covering it. And the more you cover it, the deeper you go. And the devil is targeting when to hit you and destroy you. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So when you are covering your sin, you have brought, brought a padlock over your prosperity. You, you have locked up your prosperity. Shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Don't be ashamed to say, Lord, Please have mercy on me. 
don't be ashamed to walk up to the pastor to say, I need help on this area. I have struggled with it for a long time. That's number one. Number two, make a resolve of feed. Make a resolve today to live for God. Not to go back to that sin. Because one thing that's, that scripture said, he who so confessed it, that is step number one. And forsake it. We have a lot of people who confess, but will not forsake. They will come and confess, but they are returning from church back to the man who is not their husband. Forsake. Walk away from that sin. Nothing will happen. You will not die. Walk away from it. You will not sleep in the street. Walk away from it. You will not die of hunger. Until you decide to deal with that sin. The sin will not let you go. Number three. Feed yourself with the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. So study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible will keep you away from sin, or sin will keep you away from the Bible. <laughs> study the scripture, for therein you think you have eternal life. It has a sanctifying power. John 15 verse 3. You are made clean by the word which I have preached you. By the washing of the water. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Study the word of God. Number um, 4. Fellowship. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Forsake not assembly of ourselves as the manner of some is, especially as we see the days approaching. Brothers and sisters, this is where we have a problem. Well, somebody will say, well, you are not living in America, you won't understand. I want to let you know that I do understand. God understands. He said, forsake not the assembly of ourselves. A major sickness of people in Europe and America, one is this issue of divorce, two is the issue of rat race. Walk, 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 time, 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 bill, bill, bill. That is the strategy of the devil. You see people who are fire brown before they step into a country like this. Walk, walk, walk. Build, build, build. We kill their zeal. Kill their Christian life. You see people who are committed to God, used by God mightily, they come over and they trade it upon the platform of work, time, bees, and what have you. In Luke chapter 4, if you read down to verse 11, just read down. You will see the negotiation between Jesus and the devil. It is called the mountain of negotiation. A lot of people have negotiated their spirituality with pleasure, with money, with work, with promotion. In this life, you will always give something for something. I will not celebrate with you in that your testimony until you tell me what you did to get it. It's when we get the details of what you did, then we'll be able to celebrate with you. What did you give in exchange? Your prayer life? What did you give in exchange? Your Bible study life? What did you give in exchange? Your holiness life? A lot of people have given their commitment to the house of God. That's what they traded for what they have today as a testimony. Fellowship. Fellowship. Don't joke with it. That is why the devil starts to kill somebody. 
And I keep saying this. If you make a resolve, Lord, today is my covenant day with you. It is me and you. Go and try it. It will not make you not to pay your bills. I'm telling you. God, today is a day for me to go to church. Do you stay more than three hours in the church? Do you come to church every day, two times or three times in a week, two hours, and you plan yourself? Sometimes you do extra time, over time, eh? and you can't fathom God into your program. And sometimes they pay you more on a Sunday. They pay you more on a Sunday so that you can trade your service for the money. Are you not thinking who has done this thing to you? Paul was asking, he said, who has bewitched you? I'm here to challenge you today. I want to tell you it is possible to be committed to God in this land and still make it. <coughs> Finally, watch and pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 said, He gave them a parable unto this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. As we conclude, there was this story in a book for primary school students those years. The story of a fox, F-O-X. You know, there is this uh, little animal called fox. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They said this little boy went to the farm and they caught the fox. And he was coming home. He saw his father, so he put it inside his cloth. <laughs> and then the father was talking with him. The father would ask him this question, ask him the other question. And he was saying, he said, this man should let me go now. And the force was biting him inside. He didn't want the father to know that he was hiding something. And the father was delaying the conversation. <laughs> And the fox kept biting, biting until he ripped the stomach open and he collapsed. That enemy inside may kill you if you do nothing about it today. Let's bow our heads in prayers. Boshi Talibaran, Sada. Marake to shande barado ziada ya, neka to shatala barade ziama, keli barado she pelina zikala barado zidiya, moka para ke do she talabaya, na my everlasting portion. More than friend or life to me all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Lead me through the veil of shadows, where me all life is full sea. Then the gates. Of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, 
all along my pilgrim journey Savior let me walk with thee not for ease or worldly pleasure nor for fame my praise shall be gladly with I toil and suffer only let me walk with thee oh yes close to thee close to thee close to thee close to thee all along my beautiful Savior let me walk with thee oh yes close to thee Close to me, close to me, all along my feeling journey. Be walk with I like to pray with some people in a particular church, they had a new pastor who came and started if I was so radical about sin, preaching against sin and then some of the elders approached him and said, sir you are talking too much about sin, you are too vocal, too raw about this sin you should find a way of you know, talking about this and making it so mild and he told them it is better to label acid acid than labeling it caustic soda. Mm. Some people who don't know what caustic soda is may drink it and die. Tell yourself the truth. You know yourself than any other person. You may deceive everybody but not yourself. In fact, people may be clapping for you but in your heart you are say, telling, saying these people don't even know me. I'm sure that God brought me for somebody. That's why I'm making bold to deliver the message he gave to me. Is there anybody here who will say, man of God, please pray with me. This area or the other area in my life, I need God's help. I want to become a better child of God. In the church where I pastor, our slogan is, we transform lives to be heavenly conscious and earthly useful. People will become useful on earth and also become heavenly conscious. Because if you get everything on earth and finally lose it, lose out in heaven, then that's a wasted life. Is anybody who say, man of God, please pray with me. Rise your feet and we're going to pray together now. Close to thee, close to thee, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, yes, close to thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Please open your mouth and begin to pray concerning this message that we have heard. If you think you are okay, thank God for your life. The message may not be for you. I know that God sent me here for somebody to correct something in your life. To make you come back to track again. Make you focus again. Make you not to waste your life and effort. And at the end of the day, you are told, depart ye from me, you walk out of iniquity. That is not the will of God for you. There's an usher should be around here. 
Rosiada, Keta Sadia, Hepereko Shanamano Sadia, Aliato Sakeda, Balido Samana, Keparaka Sotalido Shanaya, Rakele Belido Samanaya, Rakete Sataya, Sola Balida, Sola Baliana, Shatalake Balido, Sola Pere Belida, Rakela, Monata, Shata, Shata, Shilabo Samaniana. Anaketo Satala Desga, Ripalara, Ripalido Salaya, Rakete Sekhara, Kobele Palido Shamara, Rupu Parada Zaniara, Rupu Kolo Zara, Rakete Sharaya, Palido, Palido Zara, Mera Kato Sara, Rakara Palini Parada 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 Sina Malino Scala, Shala Keto Sitia, the Pelida Kipto Scata, Shala Ti Parako Tosketi, the Palakato Shalabaros, the other Sabaro Shala. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, it's something new in my life. Something new. Oh, Everybody rise to your feet right now, lift up your hand and say, My father, my father. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I deal with it. every enemy inside. In the name of Jesus, we flush out. Oh yeah, open your mouth and make it a prayer. We flush out. 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 So many roads, Solian. Secretaries, Canada. In this song, there are two people. One, you had a gift before, but somehow you lost it because of how things were going in your life. God said, I want to restore it now. And then there is a second person. God said, I want to use you. I want to anoint you. I want to rest my hand upon you. I begin to use you beyond your imagination. The power of God is going to rest upon these two people. Whatever you are, please, Osha is going to help me. Because the hand of God is coming mightily upon your life now. Restoration is taking place. Activation 
is taking place. See that. Go to Siana. Palido. Salamano. Shatalia. Kele. Pelido. Satala. Pena. Kata. See her. Epube. Epube. Where are those two people? Wherever they are, let the hand of God locate them. Let the hand of God locate them. Locate them. Marida, Katasito, La Parade, Sharameno, Siata, Karakete, Karakete, Siana, Ropele, Ropele, Siana, Mamara Ketosa, Sasa, Sosa, Prelina, Kato, Shana, Rakete, Siana, Pola Daza, Pola Daza, Seremanina, Sarabera, Kata, Sharea, 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 Parada, Siana, Ebube, show me the second person, wherever you are, let the hand of God go my on you. Let there be activation. Let there be activation. Let there be resource. Somebody help her. Somebody help her. Power! Shana na raketo sadaya. Reke paro sadaya. Raketo shanina. Power! Let the power go. Team mightily with you. Activate that which is in you. Download and grace. Let it be activated. That's right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. I speak into your life today. You will not run your race in vain. You will run this race. I win a prize. You will run this race. You will run this race and receive from God at the end of the day. Thou good and faithful servant. Come into the joy of the kingdom. Let it be your portion in the name of Jesus. I raise a voice against powers in this land that kill giants. Powers in this land that kill what is in somebody. In the name of Jesus, I bring them under your foot today. Whatsoever that is born of God overcoming the world. And this is a victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Receive grace overcome from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive fire. I just feel fire. I just feel fire. The fire is coming on somebody. God is about to firearize your life again. He's about to set you on fire again. Set you on fire again. Set you on fire again. This is not you. This is not you that we used to know. In the name of Jesus. Return to the you that you were. Salaya, Seletaraya, Soda Maraya, receive fire. Fire your boat. Fire your boat. I activate the fire. Le Catala Baraketo Sitaniana. I speak into your life. May America favor you. You shall eat the good of this land. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Say, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Yeah. Receive the grace today to assess the good of this land. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless every one of you today. May the Lord move you from where you are now to where you should be. I activate promotion in every aspect of life. You will no longer struggle in this land. Men and women will come to favor you. I bless you today. I bless the pastor. I bless the wife. I bless the deacons, the deaconesses, the leadership of the church. I bless the men of the church. Bless the women of the church. I bless the youth of the church. Bless the teenagers of the church. I bless the children. I bless the entire congregation. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, your loudest. Amen. Well, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus.
Oh, is your place? Do something crazy for God. Wow, what a mighty God we serve. Let me welcome my sister-in-law, younger sister to my wife, whose family came on vacation to U.S. and they learned that we are here to minister and decided to drive all the way to this place to be with us. This is Miriam Chidema. God bless you. You are welcome.